Okay. I've got it right after the order. Good job. Um, it being after 10 o'clock, I will call to order the Oklahoma County Jail Advisory Committee a special meeting. It's properly posted Wednesday, September 20th, 2017. First item of business is a discussion and or possible action to approve the minutes from the special meeting that took place on Tuesday. Um, I do not have any changes. I will note, though, there, there was an item that we discussed. Uh, we did have a motion and a second, and then we failed to vote on it. And I believe that's at the top of the second page of the minutes. Motion by Compton, second by Satterwhite on page four, subpart D, to add and slash or, and to add the word adult in front of the word correctional on line two. Um, so I will note that. We will take action on it. That was incorporated into the working document um, that, that was attached to the agenda and that we have in front of us today. Uh, any other changes, questions, discussion, or debate regarding minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to the revise the minutes as indicated earlier. Second. Okay, Chad? Aye. Aye. That's our approved, 3 0. Okay. So, on to the document itself. Let's go ahead and take up then. Everybody have the red line version. Um, it's going to be on page four. Subpart D. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the change and slash or adult that's been included in that subpart? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion or debate questions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say aye. It's unanimous. Passes 3 0. Okay. The next item then to discuss would be the proposed changes that are included in Article 7 that were made um, at the direction of the committee. Um, again, as a reminder, the appointed trustee terms were changed to four years to three years. Language is included that those terms shall also be determinants for the term of the appointing elected official. And then there's language at the end of paragraph one, just noting that should an elected official trustee be replaced for any reason, that would be retirement, uh, death, anything like that, the poor completion of the regular term, then that uh, elected official trustee would be able to appoint, reappoint, replace the appointed trustee, and again, that service would be coterminous with whatever is left on that elected official's term. Any questions regarding the changes to paragraph one? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, in our last meeting we discussed as far as clarifying um, who could sit on the board, and we had talked about um, shall not be an elected official. Has that been incorporated? No, it has not. Um, although we had talked that it would not be allowed by statute. Right. And but if the statute yeah, changed Right. And my concern right. was I would think it would be more appropriate that the board interpret that statute put on here instead sure. of going back to statute. Okay, so um, I would propose. I think we had it. We did. I've got mine penciled in here. 
um, about in the middle of the document where it says the sentence starts out trustees and brackets shall serve. We change that to four years and shall be assistants of the beneficiary shall not be elected officials is where I had it insert after beneficiary comma on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the eleventh line from the top. Oh, so um yeah, let's do it this way. I will um I will move adoption of the changes in paragraph one of article seven um, subject to the addition of language after the word beneficiary halfway through the paragraph what line did you say that was? 11. Okay. You're right I do remember having this note. Line 11 inserting the words after beneficiary and shall not be an elected official. Be an elected official. I consider that a friendly amendment um, to my motion to adopt all of the other changes. <coughs> um, any other questions? Yeah, can you can you read what that sentence will say? Sure. Or not? The other three trustees, open parent, the quote, appointed trustees, close quote, close parent, shall serve terms of four years shall be citizens of the beneficiary and shall not be an elected official, comma, one of each of whom is appointed by one of the county commissioners, comma, but of whom shall be confirmed by the board of county commissioners, comma, and shall serve terms or terms, coterminous with the term or terms of the appointed elected official trustee, period. Okay. Is it fairly clear, just to make sure there's no ambiguity, um, I'm fine with that language. So uh, I've actually got a couple of things that I have questions about. Do we want to go ahead and move to accept this language and then look at any potential alterations so as to not confuse the issue, or do we want to address well, everything in seven and then have one motion at the end? Now let's go ahead and address. Uh, you said you have questions on the remaining document outside of Article. No, no, it's in this particular. Within Article seven. Yeah. Um, Paragraph one. Is it? Let me ask you this, is it changes to the proposed language? No, um, it's clarification. Okay. Uh, one of them is clarification and then two of them are things that I don't think we've necessarily talked about or considered. Great. Right. Um, let's, um, there's a motion on the table to accept the draft language with the amendment that was just discussed. So let's pick that up if there's a second. And then we'll go to uh, okay. the question. All that you have. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion or debate? All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Motion carries three zero. All right. Clarification. Do you think it is clear enough here? That the sense that we were just talking about, one of each of whom is appointed by one of the county commissioners. It doesn't mention that each county commissioner will appoint. So should we? modify that to say one of each of whom is appointed by each county commissioner. Which line are you on, Cody? Same line that we were okay. in a second ago, find 11. I, <coughs> you okay. see where I'm... Uh, yeah, it, I, I agree. It's, it's a bit wordy. Um, I read it several times. I think it does denote that each commissioner gets one appointee but it could be clear, and I mean, if you have suggested language to make it clear, I'm certain. I think if we just changed, if it was one of each of whom is appointed by each of the county commissioners, uh, instead of just change the one to each, I think maybe would be a little bit more clear. Is that your motion? Yes. I'll second. Any discussion or debate? Line 11, changing the word one in front of, of the county to each. Any questions, discussion date? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? None opposed. Carries 3 0. Okay. Um, the other clarification would be we mentioned in here that these uh, appointed trustees shall serve a term of four years, and we do know that it will be 
contemporaneous with the elected official. Do we want language in there that specifies the beginning term for each appointed official, maybe less than four years? Because it will be less than four years for all of them. Um, or do you think just having the the terminology contemporaneous with the terms of the appointed elected official trustee would be sufficient? And that, well, that's why I added the last sentence, in paragraph one: the term of service of any newly appointed trustee shall be coterminous with the appointing elected official trustee. And that way, I mean, again, if they're just serving out two years, then that's the term that they're serving, and that would be the time that is they appoint somebody else that they would serve. Um, so I thought just as, as long as we were well, yeah, I mean, that's covering that co-determinant that language. I, I agree. I, I make the comment just so that it's on the record that that is our intent. Great. And that way if anybody has to come back and look at our intent, that is notated. So the record shall reflect. The other item is, you know, we talked about if an elected official decided to resign or for whatever reason did not fulfill the length of their term, the elected official, that upon a new elected official taking office, they would have the ability to appoint a new appointed trustee. Correct. To replace the old one. The interim, if you will, when an elected official, and let's just, the, the sheriff's office was the most recent, so let's use that, because we have the issue with budget board. Um, when the sheriff resigned, the under sheriff took over the day-to-day -day operations but couldn't sit on the board. There really wasn't any representation there during that period of time until somebody else was elected. This interim piece, if this happened again, say uh, uh, Sheriff Taylor or one of the commissioners decided to resign midterm or whatever, until a new elected official was officially elected, there would be nobody, there's no mechanism in here necessarily to allow the interim the interim person to sit there. I know we've talked about chief deputy language and that may be something that we can address. We could put that in there that upon resignation or removal of office, the chief deputy that had been serving and is currently serving in that position could remain. I don't know what we want to do there, but I just see that being a potential issue. I think that's a legal question. By operation of law, I would assume that the interim official would step into the shoes of the, of the trustee. However, I think that the language that we've included in paragraph one would prohibit any sort of interim appointment because when somebody is serving as an interim capacity, they don't really have a term per se. I mean, they're a placeholder, so I don't know that they would be granted the authority under paragraph one to pull the appointed trustee off and appoint somebody because, again, there's no... Sure, I, and I'm not really addressing that. Um, it would just be, can they serve... Could they continue to serve? And but you could put in the language that their service would terminate upon the election of the office that was vacated. I mean, I agree with Cody, and I mean, it is a matter of law. I mean, the budget board issue he brought up, but that would be something that I think that representation is needed in whichever department that suffers a resignation or whatever. Um, I think what we're looking if we look at paragraph one, line five, and it talks about how, I mean, essentially they be automatically become trustees by virtue of serving either on the Board of County Commissioners or a sheriff and their successors as Oklahoma County Commissioners or Oklahoma County Sheriff and shall upon taking the oath of office but without any further act. So again, as soon as that interim official takes the oath of office, I think by operation of law and by operation at this point, which they become a trustee. Is that fair? In do you mind if we get interpretation mm -hmm. counsel? Do you have any thoughts on that? Because I know we've, I mean, of course it's different. You know, budget board statutes are different than, than this. Do you think successors would be 
be sufficient to allow, you know, say Mr. Honeycutt was the undersheriff and, and uh, Sheriff Taylor resigned and he was operating the day-to-day -day operations. I don't know if that makes him a successor, but I don't know the answer to that question. And that's really where we need to make sure that, I mean, Title 60 is clear that the Sheriff's Office has a seat at the table and is represented. Is represented. The Board of County Commissioners will have one, so if one of the County Commissioners resigns, you still need that statute because there's somebody there. If the Sheriff were to resign, then if there's if there's not a mechanism to allow somebody else acting on behalf of the sheriff to be at the table, we may be in violation of passing that statute. What we could do on line nine, which begins like a text as if originally named as a trustee here in here in period. After that sentence and say successors shall include officials serving in an interim capacity. in the discussion will make it hard to mm -hmm. So we're simply inserting on line nine after the word here in period, successor shall include an official serving in an interim capacity. That's my motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion or debate? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries three zero. All right. Yeah, any more questions, clarifications, or amendments to Article seven, paragraph one? No? None for me. Okay. Um, those were all of the changes that I had, unless there are any additional questions or amendments. Um, I think it would be in order to take up the document as a whole for recommendation. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. on Article 7, you had suggested as far as the Chief Deputy sitting in for the commissioners would be addressed on additional paragraph, paragraph 12. Did you send this out, Randy? I did. Okay. Well, it was attached. It was attached to the agenda. No, it, it, it had. Well, I'm still getting used to the new agenda stuff. No, come on. So here's the red line version. I did not print that in color. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I, I say red line. I mean, well, I don't have a color print. Um, Thank you. Ma marked, mark up, whatever track change version. I just didn't want you to be upset. No, no I don't. No. Okay. Not a red line. Red line. Again, term of art. So, Steve, I'll give you an opportunity to review that language in paragraph 12 and take that uh, address to that issue. And so it talks about the new share of your team, so that's a double clarification. Mm -hmm. Looks good, Randy. Okay. Well, again, I I know that we have identified that issue in kind of the budget board setting, but we certainly don't want that to be the circumstance here where um, the sheriff's office would, for any reason, go unrepresented. And you are correct um, in noting that that is proposed language that we didn't take it specifically in the last meeting. Any other questions, amendments, um, changes, clarifications, say or otherwise? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. At some point, I'd like to make some comments on this. I just 
in the hive, and I don't know at what point you'd like that to occur. But certainly get the measure. Well, and that was going to be my comment before. I want to make a recommendation. I, I want to hear from the sheriff's office. I'd like to hear from Sheriff Taylor as well, and maybe if if he would like to weigh in, and we need to do that at another time. But um, that is something that we need to hear from. Sure. Um, yeah, absolutely, Danny. Uh, I think now it. One second. Any other issues or questions, comments at this point with regards to changes to the document? My, I do have a question. Has uh, Mr. Brooks or anybody at his firm reviewed the changes to make sure that we are good to go? Not yet. Okay. I do think we should allow them to look at it before we I agree. send it as a recommendation. Okay. You're up. You know, it seemed like from the beginning that the purpose of this committee was to determine whether or not a trust initial was needed and necessary. And it seems like from the beginning that that charge has been ignored in the pursuit of barreling down the tracks to just get this document created. I've seen no discussion on pros. I've seen no discussion on cons. I've just seen document manipulation. And so has this body done any research on what's going to be the added cost to the county to, to go into this undertaking, have we have we looked at looked at anything like without a funding mechanism or any other trust in the state like that? Do they not have independent funding mechanisms? Because without an independent funding mechanism, how again I'm bringing up what I brought up from the first meeting. How is this indenture any different than BET budget board and BOCC's involvement? It seems like we're creating another level of bureaucracy that is currently in place that does nothing but add additional expense to the county. So has that been addressed? You know, when, you, when you talk about additional costs to the county, you know, currently jail operations are funded out of general, law enforcement out of special. Well, you take away some of the special because they're generated out of the jail, now you're going to have to fund law enforcement out of county. So that's something I've I think you need to consider. There's also the, the special revenue funds are statutorily restricted. So what effect will that have on a trust utilizing restricted funds? I don't know the answer to that. You know, I, I just see a lot of movement. <coughs> it seems like this committee has said we're going to generate this document and that's where the analyzation stopped. I find that troublesome. Uh, I, I sat through Mr. Brooks's presentation. His, the entirety of his presentation was concerning because he basically sat in that chair and said, I will write whatever you pay me to approve. That was concerning. Um, if the trust is a separate legal entity from the county, if this committee's idea that, that there is the trust would bear no liability for its actions, I think it's misplaced. I think it would serve the committee well to further research that issue. Uh, you know, obviously then, there's been no discussion on, obviously, it, like, like I said, it, it's a little bit difficult to address because you've created a document and you're going to be making a recommendation and it just doesn't feel like you've done the, the necessary research to understand exactly what it is you're putting in place or how it's going to operate. And so obviously there's concern on my behalf of the employees under my care that ultimately who are they employees of and then what effect does that have on longevity, retirement, access to health care, those types of employment status questions. And I don't see any regard or any discussion being had on any of these <coughs> issues. And so from the sheriff's office standpoint, that's concern. You know, if if the if the trust is a separate legal entity from the county, how does the county then 
what mechanism is allows the county to satisfy judgment when the trust gets sued? How does that work? So I, I just think there's a mountain of, of legitimate concerns that just have not been addressed. And, and don't take this as just a negative critique of a trust in general. I'm just saying specifically this committee is, is I feel like it's just we're going to manipulate this document and the analyzation stops there. So I, I just don't feel like the pros and cons have been played. So that's and there's a lot to be concerned about. So that's, that's the end of my spiel today. And I'm sure Sheriff Taylor will make himself available to the committee uh, whenever you guys see. Fair enough. I think in response, the committee in working through draft document that we start from, you know, day one, and our charge was to advise the board county commissioners, obviously we can't implement anything uh, upon the establishment of the jail trust, what would that look like? Things of that nature. Um, so the purpose, I think by the, the commissioners established in the committee was to advise us on, yeah, if we were going to set one up, what would that look like? Um, in working through the document, from hearing uh, from the sheriff's office, from Tulsa County, and from others, um, I think that analysis has been done about the pros and cons. Um, your office has been very clearly stated, you know, your concerns about law enforcement, um, as opposed as opposed to you know operations of detention facilities. And this committee did, in fact, eliminate language throughout the document that related to law enforcement, therefore restricting the charge of what um, the trust would be, and that will be our recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners, is to remove that language. Um, and I would say it, against the advice of council to a certain extent, because uh, trust council said, no, make it as broad as possible. And we've gone against that and actually limited um, what would be the authority of the trust in that regard. So there has been policy analysis uh, with relation to the language um, that we've talked about, that we've drafted, that we've omitted, that we've included. Um, so um, I, I think that that has been addressed. The second point being um, that there's still a lot of work to do along some of those lines um, of, employ of employees, satisfaction of judgments, uh, statutory restrictions on special revenues. Um, again, Trust Council made it very clear that this is the, the first step um, in a complex process and that really most of those things will be discussed in much more detail um, when it comes to drafting and executing some sort of operational agreement. As far as the setting up of the trust, um, again, a vote by the commissioner should they agree to approve. I mean, it sets it up, but that trust at that time really doesn't have any authority or anything to do without that additional step. Um, so that's where we are. And so I, I agree with you to the extent that we have more discussions, we have more research to do. Um, but we're already past the deadline that the county commissioners gave us to make a re recommendation on if we were going to set up a, a jail trust, what would it look like? And uh, and again, as a part of that, the reason we are beyond that deadline is because we wanted to make sure that we had time to talk to um, the stakeholders that would be uh, interested in the jail trust document. Uh, any other comments with regard to Mr. Honeycutt's uh, I'd statement? I'd like to make one, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Danny, I agree with a lot of items you said. This is something that, that I think the operational agreement is going to provide the clarity that you're talking about. At least that's what I see the operational agreement to be. I mean, for many, many years there has been co-mingling of the special funds and the general funds. 
and that's why I want clarity to know what this trust is going to be responsible for and what bills the trust is going to pay. I mean, to me, the clarity is the number one thing because the sheriff knows what his responsibilities are and the jail trust knows what theirs is. I think that if we spend our due diligence now to do this the best we can, especially with the sheriff's input, I think we can have a working document that ultimately saves the taxpayers money. I mean, I know that there's going to be a jail trust administrator. We could, there could be and may be several positions with the trust, paid positions, and eventually it may cost a little bit more. I don't know, but it, the way that I see it, we need we need to do something to make everything more transparent. Right. And for well, me, that that's the biggest, that's the driving force. Well, you know, I, to your point of, you know, the, so the trust is going to operate with administrators and various employees of the trust, which makes sense. I don't dispute that. Right. But again, it goes back to, I think, our movement is premature without a dedicated funding source because then what you're doing is, our county is not flush with cash. We all we all right. know that. Right. Okay. So we've got a finite amount that's going to go to the sheriff's office anyway, and I'm and I'm assuming that 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 ch chunk is going to go to the trust. And so now what you do when you add administrative levels of the trust, you're reducing from that pool. And so to 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 insinuate that it wouldn't cost you more because now that's just added expense and added expense and added expense. Right. And so I think. That's why I'm saying I think without a dedicated funding source, I think any move to go towards a trust is just premature. Okay? That's, because otherwise, like I said, otherwise you're talking, we're, we're just talking about the same pile of money that is already governed by the BC. And just to get a, a snapshot, at right. the end of this month is the cutoff, you know, to pay expenses we incurred last fiscal year. Right. So anyway, you know, I'm going to be looking at a report to see what portion was dedicated to jail operations. And that will it may not be really accurate, but that will be a baseline on something to start looking at. Because as it stands now, just from my little world, it, it's hard for us to look at all the special accounts in general and really determine what goes where. As far as your um, special funds are concerned, I know a lot of them are statutorily restricted. I know some of them do uh, provide for jail operations. I, I think it's going to be a work in progress. I think that, again, just like this communication we're having now, I think that between the commissioner's representatives and the sheriff's office, I think that we could do something that would be agreeable to both parties. I really do. I think it would take a load off the sheriff's operation if the trust was running that, a financial <coughs> trust. Like Randy had said, uh, the law enforcement end, I don't think we should ever get into that. That's Steve's opinion, not Commissioner Mons. But as far as the jail operation, you know, there has been some trust, you know, in the state of Oklahoma that are attempting to do what we are now. And we can glean some of the information from them. That's why, like Randy had said, we're trying to clarify the language. You know, I'm in the minority here. I'm not a lawyer, you know, and being generic provides opportunities to do a lot of different things. Well, I like clarification. And I think that that's what we're striving for in the language of this trust. I understand your concerns. Um, yours are questions and things that I want to address if, if uh, Sheriff Taylor can be here. Um, you, my sheet back here, you check off a lot of the things. Um, my concern is we do present this trust document to the Board of County Commissioners. My concern is that we are saying as a group that not only do we like this language, but we're also in favor of going to the trust model. And I think there's still some questions that are outstanding that we need to have answered before we go to the commissioners with that. I mean, for instance, when would this uh, trust spin up? When would it stop, start operating? Um, how would it operate? Do we uh, anticipate an operating agreement back with the sheriff or are, are you know, who are the, ship, the current detention officers going to be employees of what you had mentioned? I mean, those are things that I think we need to address up front. That way, whenever we do get to an operating agreement and 
where we're seeking out the clarity. If we if we move forward on this and then we get to the operating agreement and we start addressing these issues and we're like, holy cow, there's all of these unintended consequences that we didn't even anticipate up front when we did this document. Now we don't we don't I mean it doesn't look good anymore. Well, I think we need to address some of that stuff up front. I mean, I, I m one of my concerns, uh, we talked about this being financial only and not um, stepping beyond uh, a financial aspect. If that's what we're looking at doing, then we're talking about the same dollars that we currently have and Budget Board is doing the exact same thing that we're going to be asking this group to do. Currently, Budget Board is allocating the general fund dollars. I think if we had a, a separate revenue stream coming in, that would need somebody to oversee it, and Budget Board wouldn't necessarily oversee that, so that would be a perfect mechanism. Uh, the Jail Trust uh, would be a perfect mechanism to provide that utility to uh, determine where that money, you know, how much is needed to go, you know, where. But right now, we're only operating with the same dollars that we had before in any expenses above and beyond what the sheriff's office currently has is only going to be a have a negative impact on what they're able to do currently. Can that get worked out? It very well may be able to, but I would like those questions answered before I make a recommendation. And if it is going to cost more, how much? I mean, are, are we looking at just having a general counsel or are we looking at having an administrator? I think the, the framework of how this is going to look if at the end of the day this the recommendation is to to institute the jail trust authority, I think we should have it outlined what we think it's going to look like and how it's going to operate beyond just presenting a document that says this is what the trust all it's going to do all of this over here and this is the parameters that it's going to have to operate under, but I think there's still a lot of questions that we do need to answer before we make a recommendation to the board. We don't uh, we don't have the authority to do that without further direction from the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, it, how's that? If you look at the resolu the resolution, the organic language that set up this committee, it included this trust and venture document with specific instructions to us to view, analyze, make recommendation on a trust and venture. Um, is, that, is that the only direction that we were given? Because I thought we were charged with analyzing the necessity or the need of a jail trust and look at the indenture. I mean, I don't, I mean, I could be wrong, but I mean, I would want to to look at that to see because I mean, I think just charging forward with glaring questions that, I mean, I think anybody would say these are still questions and concerns. I, I don't, I can't, personally, I can't make a recommendation whether I think a, a jail trust authority in in a perfect world is the, the right solution or not. I can't make a recommendation with so many questions and holes out there. Right. I, I just, I, I mean, I, I, again, but without further instruction or direction from the Board of County Commissioners. But I think that it was broad enough that we have that instruction. I mean, do you have that document? I might have the organic language. And Council, you know, do you remember? My recollection was that it was broader, that it yeah. was to I think it consider was. the benefit and, and possible disadvantages, but that's just my recollection. I don't have it. I mean, we can look. I can tell you as chair, uh, I uh, would like, I would require more direction from the Board of County Commissioners. Ultimately, it's their decision. And we could ask for that direction um, without seeing the document. Well, why don't we have? I mean, I, I feel that it is broad, but I mean, why don't we recess to see if we can locate the document and okay. see if it does allow? 
Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, we, we'll stand and recess okay, until we find the. Um, it would have been commissioner meeting mid June. Our, our first. I thought it was yeah, we that Commissioner yeah. Mon mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 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 uh, yes. shortly after You you did a resolution or you did an agenda item to present it to the trust, the document. And I can't recall Matt when that was. Oh, so that would have been May. Yeah, yeah. maybe earlier, but yeah. Maybe earlier. I mean I really think it was very yeah. close on the heels of how long do you think I take you? Okay. Yeah. I'm looking motion to recess for 15 minutes. Yeah. There's a motion to recess for 15 minutes. No, we actually don't even have to do that to call the chair. So we'll stand in recess okay. for 15 minutes. Thank you, Matthew. Mm -hmm. we'll turn up the heat, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. We'll get that sorted out. Mm -hmm. Having not appeared in front of the board, I think that we're overdue for at least the status report to them. I don't know that I, I would like to have committee um, approval to do that. I don't know that that's necessary. Um, but what are your thoughts as committee members uh, appearing in front of the board, updating them on the status, and um, then kind of receiving further instruction about, you know, fulfilling our duties under uh, paragraph two of resolution 61-17. I think it would be fine to give an update. I mean, I think that 
if the chairman would care to, you could tell the commissioners that um, the operational agreement that we have yet to work on is going to be closely associated with the trust language. So once that's developed, we may have to go back to trust. But I think the operational agreement is going to be the meat of this whole thing. Uh, the chairman might consider <coughs> that we request um, the commissioner's approval to get counsel. I don't know if that's gone across the board yet, that we could do that. But yeah, I agree with giving them an update. Thoughts? Um, I mean, what would... I mean, I don't have a problem with giving them an update, but, I mean, there's really... I mean, to me, we've worked on the document and have it, you know, we're currently working on it. But, I mean, I, I still, like I said earlier, I think there's some questions that we still need some major stakeholders. And, um, that, I mean, we just think there's still some stuff that we need to have answered before I can make a recommendation as to the feasibility of the trust. I can say, well, if we did, think it was feasible to have a trust, what the trust indenture might look like, but I think it's getting the cart before the horse to recommend a trust indenture if we haven't assessed the feasibility of establishing a trust that would necessitate a trust indenture. But would this be informative, Mr. Chairman, when you're talking to the commissioners? I mean, we're, we will make no recommendation. It, well, it depends, because we're still on item four, and we're still on the trust indenture document itself. Uh, so we've gone through all of the amendments and changes and we've approved this. We haven't taken any action on whether we would recommend the trust indenture document should the feasibility of a trust be established. Again, that's the commissioner's policy decision to make. Well, but they charged us with assessing the Fair feasibility enough. of the trust. And I think that's first and foremost. I mean, if, if they've asked us to to you know, see if, if we can or should do something, then I think we should answer that question before we answer how we should do it. I mean, should we do it? Yes or no? If it's a yes, then how do we do and it? Then we, and then we received more specific instruction after the initial resolution in April, and then we have a more specific resolution in May that's subject to what we've been charged to do to look at, review, analyze, recommend with relation to the trust and venture document. But on that same one, on, on both of these that we have, there's both of them say, review, research, evaluate, and recommend to the Board of County Commissioners issues relating to the feasibility of establishing an Oklahoma County Jail Trust. Right. And I would say both necessitate that. And then, to me, if the answer to that is yes, the feasibility and um, the, the feasibility is there and we should do it, then we address the trust indenture because if we don't feel like the, that it's feasible to do a trust, if this group felt like it wasn't feasible, then why why would we waste our time spinning wheels on a trust indenture? Fair enough, and I'm not arguing that with you. I mean, again, the, the purpose is set out in paragraph two of the initial organic resolution. However, we then it, we have a whereas paragraph where it's just reflecting the purpose of why we were set up and then specific resolution by the board to look at, review, and analyze, and make recommendation on the trust and venture. Um, I think it's clear from our conversation today we need clarification from the Board of County Commissioners at this point in time because, A, we have done what they have asked us to do under the second resolution. We have analyzed, we have reviewed, we have made changes, and we have a draft trust and venture. Now, that goes back to the initial purpose, and that is the feasibility of doing it in the first place. And we don't that. have enough, and excuse me for interrupting, but we don't have enough information to determine if it's feasible at this point. And I, again, I think that's fair, yeah. and I think that would why it behooves us to go to the Board of County Commissioners at this time uh, with a status report um, to advise on the progress of the committee. That being said, do uh, on item four, is there a motion regarding any action on the trust and venture um, document? 
I think that's what we need to discuss and determine at this time. Are we ready to say, hey, we're not making any recommendation on the feasibility of a jail trust? I think submitting a, a trust indenture, I mean, it indicates that we are, uh, we do think it's feasible and that we should go for it. I think it's premature. I, I, I don't think that we should, first and foremost, even if we had assessed the feasibility, we made changes to this document. I think um, bond council should look at the document before we make a recommendation. But even before we get that far, I think that we need to assess the feasibility, answer some questions from key stakeholders, the sheriff's office in particular, before we move forward with any recommendation, whether it is to establish a trust, uh, generally speaking, and specifically uh, adopting this particular trust of interest. I agree. Okay. So um, we'll take no action with relation to item four, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Item five, citizen participation. Any citizens wishing to participate? Seeing none, board comments. District one? No. District two? No, thank you. District three, pleasure doing business with you. Um, we will adjourn, well, uh, Actually, can I make one comment? You may. I appreciate you um, modifying that paragraph. I know we were, you know, kind of, putting you out there on, on doing that, but I think you did a really good job on that language and I really appreciate it. I appreciate that. Um, subject to the discussion that we've had, I will um, appear before the Board of County Commissioners to provide the status update of the progress of the committee, making no uh, recommendations. And um, with that, item seven, we will, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you for the table. Here. Yes, sir. Got your early Christmas. <laughs> I haven't made the correction. Thank you.